So in the last video, we developed a formal definition for what a circuit is, but this definition doesn't actually tell you what a circuit does. So to be a complete model of computation, what we're going to need is not just how do we represent the circuit, but also how do we evaluate the circuit, because that's the part that actually tells us how to compute the function. To identify what a circuit does, we need to define an execution or evaluation model for this model of, of computing. So to do this, what we're going to need to do is work through our intuition for what an electrical circuit might do, and then try to formalize that behavior. So to start with, our intuition tells us that edges in our, in our circuit don't just connect gates together, but instead they're actually carrying information from one gate to the next gate. So to capture this idea, we're going to identify a function that we're going to call w that identifies the value that's carried by one of the wires. So this value is going to be 0 or 1, but we're also going to add in this extra value that represents sort of unknown or undefined. So this is that uh, vertical line, horizontal line symbol you see here. That's oftentimes called bot or bottom. So the idea here is that when a gate outputs a value, the wire that was connected to that gate is going to have that value changed from unknown to whatever the gate's output value ended up being. In order to actually compute the function, we're also going to need to define how it is that we're actually going to get output from the circuit. So we need to define what, it, what the output is and then how to obtain it. So recall that we wanted our circuit to map binary strings that were input to binary strings that were output. So because this is, this is what our function is trying to compute, we want to guarantee that the output from this circuit is itself going to be a binary string. So recall that when we were defining the representation of our circuit, some of the edges had an output bit as their destination. Those were those Y values that we saw. So the way that we're going to actually get an output string from this circuit is we're going to look at all of those edges that ended in one of those output locations, output bits, in some particular order. And we're going to take those values from that function w and assemble those into an output string. So now with w, we knew how to represent all of the values in the circuit. And we talked about how we can get output from the circuit, how we can get the output string from the circuit. But we haven't yet described any of the behavior of the circuit. We haven't connected the inputs and outputs of the circuit yet. So in order to identify this, we're going to work through the definition of that w function that told us the value being carried by an edge in that circuit. So this definition is going to show us how to identify the input to the circuit and how that information is going to propagate through the circuit while our computing progresses. So to help us out, we're going to have this, this val function, which is going to identify uh, the value of a gate so that the value carried by an edge is going to be the val of that gate that the edge came from. So the value of a gate is going to change sort of as we progress through our execution of the circuit. So we're going to start out with some initial value, and then that value is going to change as we compute more and more gates. So initially, the value of every gate is going to be undefined, so this bot symbol, except for those gates that represented inputs. So those inputs are going to start out having some value. That value is going to be the input string that you provided to the circuit. And then every single other gate in our circuit is going to have the value bot or undefined. After this initial setup, we're going to be able to show how we can derive values of additional gates in the circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that so long as we have some edge or some wire in our circuit with unknown value and some gate with all known inputs, then that means that we have information in order to provide a value for another wire. 
So as long as we have the situation of unknown wires and then gates with only known inputs, what we can do is we can take that gate with known input and we're going to take the label of that gate in order to derive the, op the operation that gate is going to perform, so whether that's AND or etc. And then we're going to apply that operation to the gate's input values. Once we do that, we now have the value of that gate and we can provide the value for that next wire. We're going to keep doing this over and over and over again until either all of the edges values are 0 or 1, so not undefined, or we only have gates left where their inputs have at least one unknown value. So that is to say that we're going to keep going until either we have computed everything or it's going to be impossible for us to go any farther. So altogether, this is our full definition for what it means to represent and evaluate a circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through an example of this definition. So here we have a circuit. So this circuit is the comparison circuit that's figure 3.12 in your textbook in case you wanted to follow along for yourself. So we're going to work through an example of how exactly we would go about executing this circuit using our formal model that we just discussed. So recall that there was this function w where w told us what the value was that any given edge carried and then there was also this function val that said the value that a particular gate computed. And to start off with every single thing had its value being undefined, so every single edge, the w function applied to that edge would give bot or undefined, and then for every single gate, the val function gave bot or undefined, except for everything that was an input. So when we first get started, the only things that are defined are actually these input values here, these x values, and the initial values for those are going to be whatever we decided was going to be the input string for this function. So in this case, the input string that I'm going to provide is 1, 1, 0, 0. So now that we have our initial values, what we need to do is we need to enter this this while loop that we had in our definition, where that while loop said, so long as I have edges that are undefined, edges whose values are undefined, and gates whose inputs are all known, then I can keep making progress towards computing things. So right now, what I'm able to do is I'm able to say, well, every edge whose starting point was one of our inputs, we now have the w value for that edge. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. We have the w value for each one of these edges. So this one should be 1 because its sources, its source node's value is 1. This should be 1 as well because its source node, source uh, value is 1. This one should be 1. And then these two should be 0. So now at this point, when we look at all of the other edges in this circuit, we don't have any more edges where the gate's value has already been defined, so we can't make progress on any edges right now. However, there are edges where all of the gate's inputs are known. So for example, when we look at these not gates here, we know that their inputs are known. They only have one input and the w value for the wire coming into that has been filled in already. So that means that we can compute with these gates. And the way that computing with this gate works is we're going to say, all right, well, here we have a gate. And all of the inputs to that gate are known. It has one input, and that value is 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up in our label function what that gate's operation is. And in this case, we can tell by its shape that it should be not or invert. So now that means we can apply that operation to that input bit 0. And so the gate's value is going to be 1. 
and we can do the same thing with this other NOT gate. Its value is 1. And now we have more edges or more wires whose values can be computed. So this edge here, its source is that NOT gate, so we can fill that in. That, that wire is carrying a 1. Same with this wire, that's carrying a 1. And this wire down here, that's also carrying a 1. So now at this point, once again, we don't have any more wires that uh, we can fill in from the, from the gates. So we can instead fill in gates uh, where all the inputs for those gates are known. So this gate here, same story, it has two inputs this time. Both of the values in this case are 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, let's look up the label for that gate, which is AND in this case. So we're going to perform the AND operation on the inputs. So this gate's value is going to be 1. This gate is an OR, so we're going to do the OR operation on its inputs, both of which, once again, are 1. So the gate's value is 1. And then this AND gate, we're going to do an AND on the two ones. So that gate's value is going to be 1. And filling in the value for that gate allows us to fill in the value for these edges. So this one is going to be 1. It's going to match the source. This is going to be 1, matches the source. This one's also going to be 1 to match the source. And now we can compute the value for this gate here. So we're going to look at the inputs, which are both 1. We're going to look up the label for this gate, which is AND. So we do AND on the inputs. So this gate's value is 1 which allows us to conclude that this edge's value is 1, which allows us to conclude this gate's value is 1. And so our result is going to be, so this y's value now is going to be 1. So now we've filled in everything that we can on this circuit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at our definition for how we get output from our circuit. And our rule for that was we said, well, let's look up the value for y0 and then y1 and then y2 if those existed. In this case, our output is we only have one output bit, which is y0. So we find the value of y0, which we can see here is equal to 1. So our output is 1.